what KFC menus look like the year you were born. Hello and welcome to Crazy Food History, where we explore the world of food and drink. Have you heard of KFC? They're this bomb fast food joint that's famous for their crispy and hella tasty fried chicken. They've been around for ages and always leave you wanting more. So let's check out what KFC was serving up back in the year you were born. It's gonna be a tasty trip down memory lane. This adventure will take us back to when KFC was already a big deal, serving up some seriously delicious grub. Get ready to enjoy all the tasty options that KFC had in store for us during your awesome year. The story of KFC is, at least at the beginning, also the story of Colonel Sanders. Sanders was born in 1890, so he got a late start in life. He got a lot of different jobs before taking over a service station in Kentucky when he was 40 years old in 1930. Things weren't always easy for Sanders over the years, but eventually he became known for the fried chicken he sold at that service station. The place became the first KFC, which was then called Sanders Court and Cafe. Over time, it turned into a roadside attraction with room for 142 people to eat. The main thing on the menu was, of course, fried chicken, and over the next 10 years, Sanders continued to improve his recipe of 11 herbs and spices that are used to season the original recipe version of fried chicken that KFC still serves today. But that wasn't the only thing that made Sanders' chicken stand out. He also had a unique way of frying his chicken that made sure it was fried the same way every time and sped up the process so that workers could fry more chicken and serve more customers faster. Colonel Sanders finally found his way to success at the age of 62. He then decided to take his idea for a restaurant on the road and open the first KFC franchise. But instead of telling his friends and neighbors in nearby Kentucky about the franchise opportunity, he went a little further away, to Utah, to open the first KFC franchise in Salt Lake City. The menu at the first Kentucky Fried Chicken franchise wasn't that different from menus today. The first menus were a bit limited. They had boxes of fried chicken in different sizes, as well as popular sides like chicken gravy, mashed potatoes, and coleslaw. In the past, though, KFC combos didn't come with the famous biscuits that you can get now. Instead, they came with hot rolls and honey. The thrift box of nine chicken pieces, which could feed three to four people, cost only $2.25, while the regular box of three chicken pieces, whipped potatoes, gravy, and a hot roll and coleslaw, cost only $1.10. Soon after, KFC made the KFC Bucket an official menu item. The KFC Bucket would become an iconic piece of Americana that people all over the world would recognize. Even though KFC had sold buckets of chicken before, the official red and white takeout bucket with 15 pieces of chicken, hot rolls, and a pint of gravy was a big hit when it came out with Colonel Sanders' wrinkled face and a smile. In the late 50s and early 60s, the bucket was sold as a way for busy housewives to get things done. All they had to do was get a bucket of chicken from KFC and add a salad or vegetable to make a balanced dinner for the average family. Housewives could take a break from the kitchen while still taking care of their children, and everyone got to eat some finger-licking good fried chicken. It didn't take long at all for KFC to become a huge deal in North America from that one franchise location in Salt Lake City. By 1964, there were hundreds of KFC restaurants in the U.S. and Canada. After a lot of wooing, Colonel Sanders decided to cash out and sell the company for a whopping $2 million in an annual salary. He wasn't happy with the deal, and according to The New Yorker, it was because the menu had changed. The menu items that made KFC famous in the first place stayed on the menu throughout the 1970s with a few additions and changes. The regular dinner box with three pieces of chicken, coleslaw, mashed potatoes, gravy, and a hot roll was still on the menu in the early 1970s but cost $1.35 instead of $1.10. In the early 1990s, KFC continued to experiment with different styles and types of fried chicken. Also in 1990, Kentucky Fried Chicken dropped the word fried from its name to avoid the negative connotation that comes with it. So instead of just putting fried chicken on a bun and calling it a day, the brand decided to try even stranger things like hot wings in 1991 and popcorn chicken in 92. For diners today, KFC's hot wings aren't much of a big deal, but at the time, wings were becoming popular at all kinds of fast food places, so it made sense for KFC, which knows a lot about chicken, to get in on the action. For example, McDonald's sold Mighty Wings at some locations in 1990. They brought them back to all locations in 2014, and in 1994, Domino's Pizza added wings to its menu. When it came out in 1992, the popcorn chicken got a little more attention, but it didn't always get good reviews. In 1993, KFC released Colonel's Rotisserie Gold, a roasted chicken that was meant to compete with similar items from Roy Rogers, Boston Market, and even McDonald's. A 1993 article in the Chicago Tribune said that Rotisserie Gold helped KFC sales go up by 20-30% to 30 in test markets where ads were running. 
In the late 1990s and early 2000s, KFC did less experimenting with chicken, but it did add one interesting new menu item that was similar to the chicken experiments it did in the early 1990s. A press release says that the KFC chicken pot pie was meant to be a new take on an American classic. The 13-ounce pot pie had 2.5 ounces of chicken covered in a sauce made with Campbell's Soup Company. In 2009, KFC came out with another item that was a big hit, but this one was made for the international market. Crushers is a line of drinks with toppings that can be added to milk-based and fruit-based drinks. In India, you can get crushers like the Strawberry Storm, which has crunchy strawberries and a creamy yogurt and dairy slush, and the Chaka Peanut Bolt, which has chocolate cookies, peanut butter, and syrup all blended together. For the beginning of a new decade, KFC decided to take its chicken sandwiches to a whole new level. KFC made the Double Down, a chicken sandwich with no bun, after a wildly successful market test. Instead, the sandwich is made of two thick pieces of fried or grilled chicken that hold together two pieces of bacon, two slices of melted cheese, and a sauce. In 2010, KFC made the decision to add the Colonel's Catch fish sandwich to its menu for good. The sandwich, which was made with Alaskan Pollock, tartar sauce, and a sesame seed bun, used to be sold only during Lent in a few markets. In 2012, KFC decided to bring back the Chicken Little sandwich, which was popular in the 1980s. They made a few changes, which didn't go over too well, especially since many people were still thinking about the KFC Snacker sandwich. The new sandwich also had pickles, which were not on the old one. How are the new Chicken Littles different from the old Snackers? The Snacker didn't have pickles, but instead had a sesame seed bun and lettuce. In 2019, KFC brought wings back in more ways than one. First, the brand brought back its traditional chicken wings. These were called Kentucky Fried Wings, and they came in plain, honey barbecue, buffalo, and Nashville hot flavors. There were 6, 12, 24, and 48 of the permanent menu items to choose from. All of them came with ranch dressing on the side. Reviewers said we got a variety of all four flavors, and we were surprised and impressed by how crisp they were and how spicy they were, even in the version without sauce. In 2020, KFC shocked customers by taking potato wedges off the side menu and replacing them with secret recipe fries, which didn't get very good reviews. This is one of the most scandalous menu changes ever. Some people said the 11 herbs and spices used for the original fried chicken didn't go well with the fries. KFC did launch a new set of signature dipping sauces all over the country in 2020. Diners will have a new line of ranch, honey barbecue, honey mustard, and hot sauces to choose from in October 2020, along with the mysterious KFC sauce. So what's the deal with the sauce? Well, the brand says it's tangy and sweet, with a little bit of smoky flavor, and goes great with extra crispy tenders and secret recipe fries. But will a new sauce for dipping make up for the loss of KFC's potato wedges? In a decade or two, only time will tell if the popular menu item will come back. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more tasty explorations. And as always, leave a comment down below letting us know your favorite KFC menu item from back in the day or today.